In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to fully counter 48 cards in the game using only the goblins. So starting off, of course, we got the goblins. Goblins, of course, are going to reach your tower if you don't address them. You can just go for goblins your, uh, yourself. Any placement doesn't really matter. All right, for the second one, we got the bombers. So the bomber is going to be a little bit harder because you actually have to surround it. So now that there's four goblins, it's a little easier to do. As you can see, we easily surround the bomber, fully countering it. Next up, we have the knight. Now, the placement doesn't have to be perfect, but you ideally want to play the goblins far away from the knight, so the knight has to walk over to them a little bit. And as you can see, pretty easily able to take out the knight before it reaches the tower. Next up, we have the archers. So the archers are pretty easy to counter. Just play the goblins right on top of them and easily able to take them out. I wanted to show you guys it also works for split archers as well. All you have to do is just split your goblins and then of course the tower will be able to take them out. So it doesn't matter if they're split or in the same lane, goblins fully counter. For the firecracker, you're going to want to take the opportunity to get the king tower activated. So all you're going to do is play the goblins low to the right side of your tower and get that king activated and zero damage dealt to your regular tower too. Next up is the minions. So for the minions, all you wanna do is just kite them a bit. So if they're coming at the bridge, you can just play the goblins behind and they'll go back. The placement doesn't even have to be exact. You're pretty much always going to be able to counter them pretty easily. For the spear goblins, you're going to want to react pretty quickly, but as soon as you see them coming down at the bridge, just play the goblins right on top of them and you should be able to pretty easily stop them. Next up, we got the ice spirit. So the ice spirit, pretty obvious, it's only one elixir, so it is going to be a negative trade, but in some scenarios, you might still want to counter the ice spirit with the goblins because of course you're going to get a counter push with them. So next up, we have the fire spirit. A short note before before I do this one, only use this as a last resort. Maybe if your tower's low or you're at 10 elixirs, you might as well play something anyway, because of course you're going to get no counter push off of the, you know, defending the fire spirit because the goblins are all going to die. And this is going to be our last common before we move on to the rares. Of course, we got the Electro Spirit. It's going to be same as the Ice Spirit. You just want to play your goblins up high. You can activate the King Tower off the Electro Spirit, but in this case, we're doing not damaging the tower. And in order to get the King activated, the tower would have to be damaged. We're going to end the Spirit list with the Heal Spirit at the end. And of course, same with the Ice Spirit, Electro Spirit. You're going to get a nice counter push off of it. Up next, we got the Musketeer. Musketeer is going to be pretty easy to counter. All you really have to do is just surround her with the goblins and they'll take her out with ease. Same thing with the Dark Goblin, but just be sure to react a little bit faster since he runs so quickly. And unlike the Dark Goblin, we have the Ice Golem. You can kind of take your time with this one, even if you don't play the goblins right away, easily going to be able to get rid of the Ice Golem and give you a solid counter push. Coming up next, we got the mini P.E.K.K.A. So this is going to be kind of like the knight. You're going to want to pull the mini P.E.K.K.A. towards the middle to allow the goblins time to spawn. So they're able to, you know, as a group, take out the mini P.E.K.K.A. Then we got the Mega Minion. Mega Minion is extremely easy to deal with. With this, you can actually wait. There's no rush to play it because you're actually going to keep more goblins alive by waiting. Whereas if you play them instantly, the Mega Minion is going to be able to take more of them out. Coming in next, we got the Battle Ram. So for the Battle Ram, you're going to want to react pretty quickly just because if you don't, it's going to charge up. But if you go for the goblins fast enough, you're going to be able to take out that Battle Ram and the goblins are easily going to be able to deal with the barbarians before they reach your tower. Next up, we have the Flying Machine. Obviously, the goblins are not able to target air, so kind of like the minions and the Mega Minion, they're just going to be used as a distraction. So if the Flying Machine's coming in, you can play the goblins very low, and as you can see, distract the Flying Machine, and a couple of them will survive. For the healer, you can play them right on top of the healer or away. It really doesn't matter the placement. You'll pretty easily be able to fully counter here. Her. In this case, we'll just do the goblins away, kind of like what we did for the mini P.E.K.K.A. in the night. And as you can see, no problem whatsoever, two of them live. For the giant, you're going to want to play the goblins as soon as you see him at the bridge, because if you play them too late, they won't be able to take out the giant in time. But if you play the goblins fast enough, you will be able to fully stop the giant before it gets a single shot on top of the tower. If zappies are coming in all in the same lane, you can play the goblins right on top of them, and they should be able to clear them out without too many issues. Just wanted to show the zappies again, so if they're split, you can still easily deal with them. You can just split the goblins in the middle once they cross the bridge, and that'll take care of them with zero issues. Next up, we have the Barbarian Barrel. For the Barbarian Barrel, you can play the goblins last second, so that way only one of them takes a hit, and then you get a very, very nice counter push. I wasn't sure if I was going to include Goblin Cage on this list because for the most part, it's a building, but I realized the brawler that comes out is something that you need to deal with, so... I guess I'll show it. The Goblin Brawler is very easy to counter. You can just go goblins up high like that towards the middle 
end, you get one goblin left. It doesn't matter if your opponent goes wall breaker, same lane, or splits them, you're going to be able to deal with them both ways. But here's what it looks like if they are both in the same lane. You can just go goblins, doesn't even have to be immediate, even if it's a second late. They won't reach the tower. And if your opponent decides to split the wall breakers, all you gotta do is play goblins down in the middle and you'll have two going in both lane to take out the wall breakers. Next up, we have the cannon card. So this is gonna be a very nice counter since it's a two for five trade. So if it's coming in, just go for the goblins to surround and the tower and the goblins will be able to take it out. And then you just have the cannon remaining, which of course your tower is going to just chip away until it breaks. Next up, we got the Hunter. He's pretty simple to deal with as well. Just make sure you surround him properly with the four goblins and you'll be good to go. The only way you could really screw it up is if he somehow targets all four of them at once. Pretty much the same thing with the Executioner. Make sure you got the placement down so he doesn't hit all four of the goblins. As you can see, one stays alive on the left and it's enough of distraction for him to be fully countered. Next is the Skeleton Army. You're going to want to play the goblins in the middle and ideally higher up and that'll easily give the goblins enough time to take out the swarm. With the help of the tower, they're not going to get anywhere near your tower. A couple of them actually got pushed back behind the bridge. That sometimes happens, but regardless, they get taken out easily. Next is the Electro Dragon. So you can play the goblins late on the E-Drag. Essentially, you're going to want to play them right before it locks on the tower. So if you go for the goblins like this, kind of off to the side near the tower, you're going to be able to distract it. No problem. Gets no damage. Even though the witch spawns skeletons with the proper placement, you are able to deal with her. So all you want to do is surround the witch with the goblins. And as you can see, they are able to take out the witch. Guards are going to be pretty much the same as the skeleton army. Just play them towards the middle to give the goblins enough time to spawn. You don't want to play goblins directly on top of the skeleton army or guards because they're going to die a lot quicker. For this one, make sure you have fast reaction time, but you can fully counter the goblin barrel with the goblins. As soon as you see the goblin barrel coming in, you're going to want to have the goblins ready to play. They're going to take out all three and have a nice counter push coming in as well. This now brings us to the first legendary, the Ice Wizard. Even though it's a legendary, it's no match for the goblins. Goblin's going to be able to wipe it out with ease, and the placement doesn't even matter. You can play them in the middle, right on top, doesn't make a difference. Next up, we have the bandit. So for the bandit, the placement doesn't really matter too much. You can play them low near your tower. You can play them up high. If I have, you know, the, you know, the option, I'll usually do it, I guess, up high because, you know, the bandit won't dash on them. But you can see even with her dashing on the goblins, I showed you in this example, no problem whatsoever. And she still gets taken out easily. Electro wizard is up next. He's super easy to take out. You can just do goblin surround right on top of him kind of like what you do for the Ice Wizard, and he gets stopped right in his tracks. The best way to counter the Fisherman is actually to wait until the last second. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. If someone goes Fisherman at the bridge, you don't have to play the Goblins until the Fisherman latches on your tower and starts to go towards it because that way the tower is going to damage the fisherman a ton so by the time you play the goblins he's already almost dead and then you have the most goblins surviving instead of playing them early on where the fisherman is going to be able to deal more damage to the goblins next up we got the night witch even though she spawns the bats it's not going to be enough for them to break through the goblins you can just go for the goblins right on top of her you can also go for them in the middle kind of like for some of the others the placement doesn't need to be exact all right the inferno drag is pretty easy because obviously it's not that great against swarms so you can wait until the last second and just go for goblins kind of at the bottom of your tower in the corner and that'll be more than enough to deal with it just make sure you don't play the goblins you know too late or something like that and have it lock on the tower the Magic Archer can be a little tricky, so make sure to react fast. So once you see him coming at the bridge, make sure to play goblins off to the side. Off to the side is better, so that way he doesn't end up lining up with the tower. All right, so I wasn't sure if I was going to include the Lumberjack because, to be honest, I don't think there's a way to fully defend him with the goblins without his rage hitting the tower, but I figured since the rage is a spell and the Lumberjack is a card, I, I thought, like, you know... It's technically speaking fully countering the Lumberjack, so if the Rage drops on the tower, my way of thinking at least is that I don't know if that like really counts as the Lumberjack getting damage, it's more so the Rage, but I don't know, let me know what you guys think, did I lie including it in my list? Up next, you got the Royal Ghost. Just be careful when you surround him, and he should be pretty easy to deal with. Just go goblins right in the middle, so that way the Royal Ghost can only attack one at a time, and if you do that, 
no issues. Because it's obviously almost impossible to predict the princess when, you know, she's getting spawned at the bridge, I decided to do an example of if she was played in the back or something and she's walking forward and you have time to respond to her. You're going to want to go goblins high up before she crosses over the bridge and before she gets the second shot in, they are able to kill her. Even though the Sparky might look pretty intimidating, quite easy to counter the Sparky with the goblins. Just got to surround and as long as the Sparky doesn't shoot all four of them at once, you can kill it without an issue. As you can see, that one stayed alive, distracted it long enough. With the Phoenix, be careful with your timing, otherwise you will take death damage from it when it dies and drops the egg. So what you're going to want to do is play goblins in front of your tower. You're going to want to play them pretty much last second, and then what'll end up happening is the Phoenix should get kited back if you do it properly, and it'll end up following that one goblin that survived out of the four, and as you can see, note that damage on top of your tower. Next up, we have just the champions left. So for the Golden Knight, it doesn't actually matter if the ability is used or not. If the Golden Knight is coming in with the ability, just make sure to play the goblins behind the Golden Knight so it's unable to dash on top of all of them. And by doing that, it only dashes on one, and then the three goblins are still alive, being able to kill the Golden Knight before it reaches the tower. Next up, we have the Archer Queen. For the Archer Queen, unfortunately, you won't be able to fully counter her if she does have the ability still available, but if the opponent already used the ability, then just simply surround the Archer Queen with the goblins and one of them will live. Up next, we have the Mighty Miner. So kind of like the Archer Queen, if the opponent has the ability available, you won't be able to fully counter him, but if the opponent doesn't, you're gonna wanna play the goblins just in the middle or right on top. Placement doesn't really matter for this one, but in this case, I'll just go for them in the middle. Now, if the opponent does have the ability available, you can counter it still quite well by splitting the goblins so that it might force them to use the ability and then and if it's used, it'll get sent in the other lane, which you'll still have two goblins in. This now brings us to the last one, the Monk. Unfortunately, the Skeleton King, you're not going to be able to fully counter with just the goblins alone. For the Monk, if it's coming in, you can kind of just play them, you know, in whatever placement you want. You can do middle, up high, you can do surround. And fun fact, even if they activate the ability, doesn't really matter too much in terms of the monk getting to the tower. The only damage it's actually going to get is just the reflection. So what do you guys think? Were there any that I missed? Like, subscribe. Thanks again. Until next time.